each covered bridge has its own mystique. And they grace the countryside, the covered bridge does. It's just part of the history of the town and, and the people of the town. And this is the kind of place that really values its history. It just brings back, a, you know, a slower time, you know, the thoughts of a slower time. You can hear the water rustling, it's so peaceful. There's a peaceful aura about covered bridges. That's where we had our first kiss, and that was uh, June 26, 1954. And then uh, we got actually engaged in it. So in, in a few days, it'll be 52 years. If you're saving an old structure, like a covered bridge, then it's just as important to save that methodology of building the structure so that you have a, a more complete history, maybe. The only way to generate interest in, in the younger generations is to show them a little bit about what went into building that bridge. Most of them were not made to be beautiful objects. They were made to be practical structures, as indeed they have shown over the past 150 years. Covered bridges are, are an old engineering technology that's been proven to work. The truss configuration is, uh, I don't know how many thousands of years it's been around, but it's the strongest geometric shape. It's just amazing just to think how they could have built something like that. Some people have some angst against having steel within a, a timber covered bridge. They are not, as a general rule, uh, repaired as they should be, employing 19th century technology. Old, old bridges require a lot of maintenance and sometimes you have to employ modern techniques to maintain that bridge. So I view this uh, in a hundred years from now that this has just become part of the history of the bridge itself. We're trying to save the whole technology from right back, not just the completed product, but how it got there. Well, the traditional enemies of covered bridges are high water, high wind, and neglect, and uh, arson. These are the ends of the wooden pegs. You notice they're thoroughly charred. Once it's gone, it's gone. And you can't say then, gee, I wish my grandchildren could see this, or Joel's grandchildren could see it. You know, if it's gone, it's gone, so. What do we have other than a covered bridge and a church and a school and a town hall? There's not much here. I thought, what a great idea, because you have this wonderful curvature of the bridge, and what a wonderful place to put colored lights at Christmas. We went from house to house in Stark, our 4-H group, and asked people to donate $1 per household to pay for the lights. This place has a big heart. We are the most fortunate people in the whole wide world.